Okay guys, Sam back in Michigan, my Morris from Halsey and his customs. Back out doing video number three on the last build of 2019 here at this location. Uh, started on first mod. I wasn't going to bore you with measuring and cutting, but I will tell you what I measured and what I cut. Okay, here we go. When we left off yesterday, I was talking about doing a stirring mod first. I got to thinking about it. I need to put the trans in, get the front axle mounted to get it sitting level so I can see how far that uh, right angle gearbox is going to hang below the chassis. I might have to op out and do something different. I don't know yet, but we'll find out here in a little while. But this is what I've done. This is I went on and moved to the extension part of this build. As you can see, I got my pieces clamped in place. Now, from here to the end is two feet long. From here to this red line is 11 inches on both sides. Why I do it that way, where this frame always breaks, where this axle is mounted, I go past that. Makes it stronger, makes it more rigid. It actually, believe it or not, strengthens up the frame quite a bit. The piece that's laying on top is just laying there. Uh, I just cut that. That is uh, like 13 inches, 13 and a quarter, something like that, to go across the front. That'll do my box in. Well, right now, what I'm going to do is we're going to go through. I got a little bit of wire left on my welder, and I got a whole roll sitting up on the bench up there. Uh, I'm going to use up this to tag this in place, and I'm going to show you how easy it really is. So you can bear with me. I'll set you on the tripod. And we'll go from there. Well, I got tools all over the place today already. Oh, I've been out here 10 minutes. But uh, I don't know how well this is going to record like this, but we're going to see. Got a little bit of 80s metal bone in the back. Let's see what happens here. Now with me, I always start at the very front. Big old fat wet daddy well, daddy well, seam it, hit a couple spots, take the clamps off to go through, and weld it all up solid. So let's go.
kind of expect this welder to run out any minute now. So there wasn't a whole lot of wire in it. I'm going to have to switch here soon. As you can see, that little bit didn't take me all that long to do. Uh, nothing big, nothing major. Now mind you guys, I'm not a rich man. Yes, I built some very, very expensive rigs this past year. But I've sold many of my rigs just to be able to do that. Okay. Since 2012, I've been running with this little Campbell Hallsfield. 115 volt flex core welder from 30 amp to 85 amp right now i'm running it on heat range 4 wire speed 0 that's what works out best for me i don't break welds a lot of people say I, my welds break i've never had one of my welds break all right it's just a little guy i paid 99 dollars for it in a damn pawn shop it was brand new in the box it's an lts 1500 ha Fooled ya. That's a damn sticker. But no, it's just a little cable house field. Like I say, it's a 115 volt flux core. No big deal. 85 amp max. I doubt I'm getting that. Got a cheap metal man welding helmet that I've had since then. The lens just broke out of the front. The protective plastic. I also have this stupid little black and decker grinder. Angle grinder that I had picked up for 30 bucks. I've been through three of them already in the past few years, but they work. I buy the cheap cutoff wheels, $1.79 a piece. They are uh, the Black & Decker, I think, or whatever the hell they are. They are uh, DeWalt, excuse me. This is what I use to cut. I buy the Davison grinding wheels. But, uh, yeah, it's that simple, guys. A little bit of welding up front. I'm going to go through and I'm going to change my wire real quick. I'm going to finish welding up the front end and put this box piece in. Then we're going to go from there and do the front axle. I'll be with you in a few minutes, boys.